Okay, jumping over here to the last thing I want to talk about, and is this article here from Jez Corden, Windows Central, the state of Xbox in Japan. Are we seeing the start of an Xbox renaissance in Japan? Since its inception, Xbox has generally been on the back foot in the lucrative Japanese gaming market. That trend is likely to continue at least for the foreseeable future. Yeah, I mean, it's going to take a long-ass time to ever get a get a foothold in there. I mean, they've never really had a big foothold. That 360, what, so it's 1.6 million units, which was great for Xbox as a second-generation console in in a, as an American company trying to infiltrate into into Japan. And when there's all of these Japanese companies who are selling consoles, yeah, that's, I mean, it's not bad. And we're seeing them probably going to surpass that this, this generation. But as of late, there are signs that the wind, the winds may be changing Microsoft's fortune. Xbox has started to recover much of its lost ground from the nightmarish Xbox one generation. owing owing to a combination of Xbox game pass value and Xbox series S affordability. And that's one thing that we've seen. We've seen, the Series S affordability being huge and the Series S selling very well, even when there's no Series S X in stock, the S still is selling, especially those weeks where it outsold the PS5. Uh, there are several other factors in play, including the global chip shortage, which has allowed Microsoft to meet Sony's PlayStation 5 on stock levels in Japan, or in some cases, even exceed them. Yeah, I mean, stock's a huge thing that we always we always talk about, but I still don't think it's the only reason why Xbox is selling well. Microsoft seems to have sensed this unique opportunity and has begun plowing investment into the region, going on a hiring spree while committing to lucrative deals for Xbox Game Pass with Japanese partners such as Sega and Bandai Namco. For gamers both in Japan and in the West, it could lead to a renaissance of Japanese game dev support on the Xbox platform. So uh, lucrative deals for Game Pass with Japanese partners like Sega. So I guess like you have the like, Yakuza stuff in there. That's huge. Uh, Bandai Namco, what was it? Um, Scarlet Nexus was in there, and I'm sure other stuff as well. And they also have the strategic relationship with Sega with their super games and their Azure platform, which I think a lot more companies are going to want to take advantage of going forward as they transition to cloud-based gaming and, and all that type of stuff. So here's Xbox's surge in Japan. You look at the numbers here. This is actually pretty interesting because you look at the original Xbox. So it started off and then just kind of flattened out. Look at the 360. It didn't start off that that great, but then it just zoomed up, got to what? I don't know. This is only going up to, it's not going to, like I said, 1.6 million. It's not going to the top. Then you see the Xbox series, which I would say been a pretty steady growth and we'll see like how far this goes up but right now the the predictions are that they will be outselling the 360. Last year Microsoft described Japan as its fastest growing market for Xbox and that trend certainly seems to have continued while details on uptake of Microsoft's gaming subscription service Xbox Game Pass are hard to discern per region at least anecdotally. It does seem to be driving force by Microsoft's recent upswing in the market. Famitsu tracks the gaming industry retail sales in Japan, issuing weekly reports on the performance of the major players, both in terms of games and hardware sold. The most recent reports show that Xbox has recently moved past 260,000 units sold, the Series X and the Series S, doubling the lifetime sales of the Xbox One in the region. So the console hasn't even been out for two years yet. It's already doubled the Xbox One. I mean, there's already... It's to me, it's pretty simple. There's way more Japanese content on there already. Like you already have Game Pass, you have a Series S, which is like a small console that they love there, and it's just such a it's such a cheap investment to get into such a great ecosystem. If you get a Series S and, and then a subscription to Game Pass, so it's like a no brainer. You walk into a store, right? Yeah, you see if it's advertised properly, it's almost it's almost like it's like an impulse buy almost to get a Series S and a subscription to Game Pass. While it's undeniable growth for the platform, it's still absolutely dwarfed by PlayStation and Nintendo, of course. The Switch the Switch and PS5 have sold millions of units between them. Generally, beat Xbox in a week-over-week -week sales chart too, although supply constraints have occasionally given Xbox a sales lead over PS5 in recent months, and therein lies some of the opportunity here. And with that that thing, with the, uh, the supply constraints and Xbox outselling a PS5 over a couple of weeks, I would say like if there was no ps5s let's say let's say the xbox one 
replace the series with the Xbox One and there were no PS5s, people wouldn't go and buy an Xbox One. They just probably wouldn't buy anything or they would just, I don't know, buy a Switch or whatever. So just wait. But there's so much more attraction to the Series X and the Series S. So it isn't just the supply constraints, in my opinion. The Xbox One generation may, may have been uniquely devastating for Microsoft chances in Japan with absolute rock bottom support for Japanese games, both from first and third parties. The 360 generation boasted titles like Lost Odyssey and Blue Dragon. Yeah, those were huge. And, and there was a bunch of those. There was like the Square Enix stuff. Um, the Square Enix had a couple of, of exclusive 360 games, like The Last Remnant, I believe. Um, there's another game that was big. I think I even still have it, but there were exclusive Xbox 360 Japanese games on the 360, which you just, you don't see. You didn't see on the Xbox one whatsoever. And there was also like, I, I've watched videos where people go to Japan and they go to like their game shops and you could get like these exclusive, like shoot 'em ups, like, so, like all these like arcade style exclusive Japanese games for 360 that were exclusive. I know I, I think I just said exclusive like eight times there, but you just don't see that. You didn't see that with the Xbox One, and I maybe you'll see that with the series console. I don't know, but I don't think I don't think that's happening, at least not yet. But that'd be cool to see that stuff be, be brought back back to like the 360 generation where they had those those styles of games. The three uh 360 generation Odyssey and Blue Dragon. Um well, more recently, Xbox has struggled to grab support from even the biggest publishers like Square Enix on games like Final Fantasy VII Remake and Final Fantasy XVI. Well, that's that's just because Sony has thrown a huge bag at them. Because I like Final Fantasy isn't it's a main it's a mainstream JRPG. It just is like in the West, everyone knows Final Fantasy. Everybody plays Final Fantasy. I don't see like the. I don't see the huge advantage of keeping of keeping Final Fantasy off of Xbox. It's going to sell well on PlayStation no matter what. Like and it's going to sell extremely well on Xbox. It's not like they're going to lose money by producing Final Fantasy for it for an Xbox by releasing a version of it. They they're, they're not. They're going to make more money off of it. That's literally just because PlayStation has just thrown a bag of money to, for them to be like okay, well, I guess Whatever money we were going to make off of Xbox, we don't even have to do work for it and we're just going to get a big money. Microsoft has been fighting back. Games like Yakuza, Leg Dragon, Danganronpa, Octopath Traveler, Dragon Quest Eleven, Scarlet Nexus, and Legendary Xbox Holdout Persona. Persona is here now. or here soon on the Game Pass. Are either already on Xbox or are coming soon. Microsoft has also partnered with smaller developers to get games like Gunvolt 3 and Iden Chronicles 100 Heroes on the platform with even more Japanese titles hitting the upcoming game uh, xbox games list. so this is great because these are all japanese games these are all going to be popular in japan what i want to know is how is this going to affect uh, game pass because we don't know the numbers or at least i don't think we know the numbers of subscribers in japan and some of these games are already out there like yakuza like a dragon uh dane rampa octopath dragon quest scarlet nexus persona isn't um, Iodine Chronicles Rising, which is the uh, smaller game that they they made off their Kickstarter, which is a great game, by the way. I would 100% go check it out. I, I beat it. Great, great game. But this is like the the main one, the turn-based one, I believe. And then Gunvolt 3. And you're gonna, there's also, not on Game Pass, but a game like Soul Hackers 2, which is coming to Xbox now. It'll be super interesting to see how that stuff affects the ecosystem and I would love to know how many subscribers on Game Pass are in Japan. Not just console sales, because how many people in Japan are, are streaming with xCloud through their phone? Some, like They love the mobile gaming over there. With You can see that definitely with the Nintendo Switch. How many people are, are, are streaming? I would love to know that. Microsoft knows it has more work to do, though. Sometimes simply throwing money at a problem isn't enough, which is why Xbox Microsoft is investing more than ever in local Japanese operations too, to help cultivate and build those important business relationships and gain deeper insight into the Japanese games industry and its culture. So they've invested in social presence in recent years. Okay, I guess this is, oh yeah, I haven't seen this. Have I seen this? I may have seen this. I don't remember. But this is their cloud gaming commercial. They Did they not have any ads of Xbox during the Xbox One generation? <laughs> I feel like it would have been a waste of money. But yeah, this is great. Look at, they're highlighting. 
Dragon Quest. Dragon Quest Builders there. Oh, yeah, and then the cloud stuff. Yakuza. So, yeah, I mean, that's good. One of the biggest things I found that was the issue with the Xbox One. Well, yeah, no, 100%. From the beginning of the Xbox One generation, right from when they announced the damn thing, the biggest issue, I would say, was the marketing. Like it was the marketing. It was terrible. They had a, such a terrible marketing strategy with the Xbox one, even just not with not explaining like what Don Matrick was trying to explain or do with the Xbox one, because you, you take a look at consoles. Now you take a look at where things are going. Things went. We're a lot closer to that vision of the Xbox one. They were just way too ahead of its time, but they also just didn't explain anything. Well, which caused so much backlash which was pretty much killed the xbox one before it even got before it even started so the marketing was terrible with the xbox one and i think this generation they've done a lot better they've done a lot better some of the campaigns that they've put out there they're doing this stuff here with game pass in japan i think that's great so marketing plays a huge role in this in this type of stuff so they gotta they gotta keep pushing that because there's probably still a lot of people that don't know that you can literally play some of those games right on your phone through streaming and, and, it, and it works great so continuing here, Microsoft has invested lots in its social presence in recent years with the main Xbox account replying to anyone and everyone while cracking jokes and sharing memes primarily in English. Uh, yeah, the main one always replies. The core Xbox markets of the US, UK, Germany, and so on all have localized social media with varying degrees of marketing spend per region. It's funny. Oh yeah, okay, UK is in there too. I was going to say, I thought I would have assumed UK, but I guess I just read it too fast and see it. Xbox marketing presence in Japan has largely been peripheral at best over the course of the last decade, but we're starting to see signs of change. The Xbox Japan YouTube channel has become increasingly active, sharing trailers localized for Japanese specifically. Although it remains tiny as of writing, Microsoft has also been ramping up on ads tailored specifically for Japan. So ads on Game Pass, ads on cloud gaming, all that type of stuff. They've been working with Japanese influencers for their products. Is this... An influencer? Okay, yeah, this is definitely... Oh, this is like a VTuber. <laughs> this is crazy. This stuff here, like VTuber. Okay, so this is an ad. Yeah, this is just like a VTuber talking about all the Xbox stuff. That's pretty cool. I mean, that's smart. I'm guessing VTubers are bigger over there. Like the VTubers have their VTuber simps. I don't know. <laughs> uh Crazy, the world, the crazy world, you know. Anyways, <laughs> Microsoft has also been rapidly expanding its staff base directly in Japan, naturally as a part of acquiring Zenimax. Microsoft inadvertently acquired Tango Gameworks. Tango Gameworks is one a lot of people don't talk about, but I mean, it's a definitely good acquisition and we know that they want to work on stuff other than the evil within. So we'll see what comes out of that. I mean, they made Tokyo Ghostwire, Reviews were mediocre. I definitely want to play that when it comes to Game Pass, but they're they're, they're a company that the Evil Within is great. So I would love to see them make an Evil Within three, but I also love to see them kind of expand out like what they want to do, and just and just have some more um, ideas and, and IPs put out there. Uh. What else? Even beyond Tango, Microsoft has been hiring producers, content directors, and managers of all stripes, specifically for the gaming division in Japan and the wider Asian markets. To the role of director of Japan, creator partnerships has been open for a couple of weeks. Okay, so they're hiring more. More people to work in Japan. Now the to-do list. The do list. So I guess Jess contacted some people. And got to, it has a to-do list for what Xbox needs to do in order to grow in Japan. Over the past few weeks, I've been contacting Japanese Xbox gamers to learn more about present sentiments about the platform in the region. As a Westerner who has never been to Japan, it's hard to really get really give what I would consider to be a broad and detailed depiction of the vast array of diverse voices and their concerns over being an Xbox customer in the region. However, there were some prevailing trends that I tend to see time and time again, many of which are all too familiar from conversations with gamers outside of the Anglo-centric US-UK duopoly. 
for Microsoft general support. Japanese Microsoft blogger WP Tech noted to me that despite the upsell, the the upswell, upswell in sales, Xbox still remains a niche interest for most Japanese gamers and game developers alike, reminding us that many game developers often forget to mention the Xbox versions of their games at all, even if they're actually on the way. I mean, that's huge. I mean, that's again, that's marketing. That's the biggest thing. You don't know that the thing is available. No one's going to buy it. So with the ads that we're seeing with them, like take, playing it on their TV and then going over, playing it on cloud on their phone, I think that's huge and they got to keep pushing that. And then obviously developers need to let people know that an Xbox version is available and, and maybe Xbox needs to let people know that these games are available. They have Xbox Wire. Xbox has a lot of stuff with their Xbox Wire where they just announce like a third-party game, even if it's multi-platform, allowing people to know that it is coming to Xbox. And they opened up an Xbox Wire Japan. So I haven't gone through that, but I'm wondering if they do that as well because that would be, I think, definitely push. General public and even gamers hardly pay attention to Xbox. Of course, it's better than the bad days of Xbox One. Yeah, I mean, that's... That is... uh a given it, it's improved other xbox fans reached out to highlight how poorly xbox handles localization in japanese too okay that's a big issue for sure which continues to be a trend the world over outside of english the amount of highlighted how much praise sony received for its localization in respect of japanese culture with his western developed samurai epic ghost of tsushima well, xbox seems to struggle to get even some of the basic rights in the flagship titles like halo infinite games like psychonauts 2 didn't receive any japanese localization with more recent Gears titles, only supported Japanese subtitles without any voiceover work. So localization obviously is is a big thing. I mean, if you can't understand, you can't, the game just, you know, you're going through it and you don't know what's going on or it's just wrong in the way that they localize stuff, you're not going to want to play it as much. It's all doom and gloom though. Xbox podcaster, Japanese Xbox fan site, Hakoba. I'm saying that right? Xbox reached out to note that they definitely seen a stronger media presence for Xbox than in previous years. That's good. No noticeable amounts in interest in Game Pass and in the Series S. I mean, stuff that we've already talked about. People go into stores, they see the Series S, they see Game Pass. It's like it's a no-brainer and the value there. Once you know about it, it's hard to it's hard to deny it. So in dozens of conversations I had over the past few months, it's all too often simply come back to games. Similar to the situation in the Western battleground for console supremacy, it's ultimately the lack of truly compelling mature AAA single player games that seems to be driving force behind negative sentiments around Xbox as it competes with Sony and Nintendo for mindshare. So that's it. The big AAA single player games, which obviously Sony is very, very, very good at. Xbox right now have some has some great games, some great single player AAA games. Um, I would consider Gears. I would consider Psychonauts. I would consider the Halo Infinite campaigns. I think they're they are they're great single player AAA games. But obviously the the main focus of Xbox is right now like Western RPGs. They're going to be huge into that and the multiplayer side of things. They they have that market right now, which will make them more money in the long run the games as a service and and the the multiplayer stuff but the big triple a stuff that the japanese gamers wants obviously aren't aren't hitting it for them yet forza and flight simulator were both cited as some of the best xbox games that were driving satisfaction for xbox gamers in japan interesting okay so i uh the rare opportunity is they can improve they they got to get more um, marketing out there. They got to get people to understand what's available for Xbox in Japan and they got to start releasing their big, their big uh, first party AAA games and get some, get, get a big single player AAA experience. Like they have to compete with at least one title similar to like a God of War, similar to like an Uncharted, get a studio to make that. I mean, there's still lots of games in the pipeline coming but Xbox in this generation is doing way better in Japan than they did in the Xbox one, which isn't very hard to beat. I mean, they've already outsold it in what a year and a half. So we'll see how it ends up. But I predict that by the end of this generation, they will, they will outsell the 1.6 million units in, in, uh, that they sold in with the Xbox 360.